Python introduced f-strings in version 3.6 of the language. And since then, they have very quickly become most programmers' favorite way of formatting strings. And a very common data type to use in f-strings is floats, because they appear everywhere in our programs. In this course, we'll explore the various options that f-strings have to format floats the way you want them in your program. Let me give an example. Let's assume you're dealing with a circle and you want to display the value of the mathematical constant pi. Possibly, you may not want to display all of those digits after the decimal point. Maybe you do in some applications, but in many other applications, if you want your program to output the value, it may be sufficient to show fewer digits. For example, 3.1416, or maybe just 3.14. You can do this with f-strings, and this is what we're going to be looking at in the next lesson in this course. Here's another example. There's a dictionary called products with key value pairs, and the keys are the names of products and the values are their prices. And you decide you want to display the price list for this food outlet in a table. The output shows you the products and their prices, but it's not displayed in the best possible way. You may want the prices to be aligned with each other, and if you look at cookies, which is $3, normally we want to show the dot zero zero, even when it's a whole number of dollars. You can modify your code using f-strings to display the table in a neater and clearer fashion. Here you can see that all the prices are aligned and even cookies are showing us $3.00 to make it nice and neat. And this ensures that the customers of this food outlet will not get confused by the price list. And here's a final example to show you some of the things you can do when formatting floats. Here's a number, 1234.56. And often you may want to show the thousand separator by putting in a comma between the one and the two. So one comma, two, three, four, dot, five, six. This is how we often show numbers in everyday life. However, different countries around the world have different conventions on how to display such numbers. For example, in some places, you may replace the dot that represents the decimal point with a comma. And in other parts of the world, the thousand separator is itself the dot. So the dot and the comma are reversed. You have the dot as the thousand separator and the comma instead of the decimal point. These are all customizations that you can do directly using f-strings. So let's see what's coming up in this course. In the coming lessons, you'll learn how to format and round floats, how to customize the width of a formatted string, such as to create the price list in a nice table, as the example you've seen earlier. You'll also look at how to round complex numbers or numbers when using the scientific notation. And finally, you'll look at how to format numbers for international use to adapt to the different conventions used around the world. So let's get started. Let's start exploring floats and f-strings. In a terminal, you can launch Python, and you can start with a standard string. And let's use the number one-third. So we can say one-third is one divided by three. Now, this is a standard string. So all the characters within it are represented literally, including the one slash three. If you want that to be represented as a float, you can change this to an f-string by adding an f before the quotation marks. But you also need to take the expression you want to evaluate, in this case 1 divided by 3, and then close it within curly brackets. The f-string will first evaluate 1 divided by 3, which gives us a float, and the f-string will display it as a float, 0 0.33333 recurring. Now, in some applications, maybe even in many applications, you may not want to display all of those digits after the decimal point. So if you want to, for example, only display two digits after the decimal point, you can use what's called a format specifier. And the way to introduce a format specifier in your f-string is to add a colon within the curly brackets right after the expression you want to evaluate, which in this case is 1 divided by 3. And f-strings have a mini language to deal with these. And we're going to be exploring some parts of this mini language in this course. If you would like to display this number with two digits after the decimal point, you can put a dot to represent the decimal point and a two to represent that you want two digits after the decimal point. And then an f to indicate this is a float. So the colon dot to f 
which may look bizarre, but you'll get used to the format of these format specifiers. Tells Python, I would like you to display this float using two digits after the decimal point. And that's where we have one third is 0 0.33. We no longer have all the remaining trees. This only affects how the number is displayed. It doesn't affect the number itself. For example, if the number were stored in a variable, that value would be unaffected. The only thing that changes is how the string displays it as an output. Let's look at another example. Let's assume you want to define a function called total price, which will take in a cost and a tax rate. And then, yes, there's always tax on things. Unfortunately, you might want to return the cost multiplied by one plus the tax. So if the tax is, let's say, 20%, you'd have 0 0.2. And therefore, this would be cost multiplied by 1.2. So that's a simple function. Let's give it some value. So let's say we have cost price is equal to $1,000 and the tax is equal to 20%, so 0.2. Let's show the full calculation using an F string. So dollar sign and let's put the cost price. And for the time being, you don't need to use any format specifiers. We'll add these in a bit. So that's a cost price. You can add to it the cost price multiplied by the tax, and that will be equal to, we can now call the function total price using cost price and tax. And we need to close the quotation marks. And that gives us $1,000 plus 200 is equal to $1,200. But you can see that the numbers are not consistent. The thousand, which was an integer, is displayed as an integer. However, once you've multiplied by tax, it's showing it, even though 200 is itself a whole number, Python displays it as a float, as is the 1,200. You want this to be consistent. As we've seen earlier, with prices, you normally want to either show the dot zero zero to show the cents or not show them at all. Let's say we want to show them all. And we also want to put in the comma to show where the thousands are. Let's start one at a time. So to indicate to our F string that we want these floats to be displayed using two decimal points or two digits after a decimal point, you can put the colon, which separates the expression you want to evaluate in the curly brackets from the format specifier. And the format specifier is 0.2F. So two digits after a decimal point, and this is a float. And that applies to the 1000, but you want to apply it to the others. In this case, the expression is cost price multiplied by tax. So this is where the colon goes. And finally, same thing with our final one. And there we have the expression showing us that all the values now have a decimal point and two digits after a decimal point. They're all zeros in this case, but they don't have to be. You can have other values which have cents, and then the tax might also have its own cents. And let's add one more thing to the format specifier. And we can add it to all of them. Right after the colon and before the dot, you can put a comma. And you can do it on all of them because we want the same to apply. And this is telling Python's F strings that you want to use the thousand separator. And any number which is larger than a thousand, you can see that the comma has been inserted. 200 is not affected, but the 1000 and the 1200 now have the comma as a thousand separator. Let's finish this lesson by summarizing the key points. You can add format specifiers after the expression you put within the braces in an F string. The expression evaluates to some data and that's what you want to display. And after the expression, you can put the format specifiers. You use a colon to separate this expression from the format specifier you want to use to decide how you want to format your data. Python's F strings have a mini language to specify your formatting requirements. However, this is not the sort of thing you need to memorize. If you use them often enough, you start to remember many of them, or if not, you know where to find them, such as in the documentation. And in this lesson, we've had a look at a couple of format specifiers. In one of them, you can use a dot followed by an integer and the letter F. And this shows that the expression should be treated as a float and displayed using two digits after a decimal point. So this example, which is similar to one we used in the lesson, the expression is one divided by three, which evaluates to a float. Then you have a colon followed by dot to F. 
So this number will be displayed with two digits after the decimal point. And you can also use a comma after the colon, and this will add the thousand separator for numbers that need it. Here are two examples. You can have the number thousand with just a comma after the colon. So this will display 1000 with a comma after the one, or you can put comma dot to F after the colon. And this will show 1000 with the thousand separator, the comma between the one and the first zero, but also two digits after the decimal point, which in this case would be dot zero zero. But there's a lot more formatting you can do with floats and F strings. We'll have a look at these in the following lessons. Let's have a look at another format specifier. And let's use an example we've used in the previous lesson. One third is, and within the braces, one divided by three. Now, instead of choosing how many digits you want after the decimal point, maybe you want to treat this as a percentage. So one third is 33.33%. And there is a format specifier for this. So once again, we have the colon, and then you can put in the percentage sign. And that indicates to your F string that you want to treat this number as a percentage. So instead of 0 0.333, you end up with 33.33%. But once again, you don't want all of those trees. Perhaps you only want a couple of them, 33.33%, for example. So in this case, you can put the dot 2, but instead of the F, which indicates you want to treat it as a float, here we have the percentage sign. And in this case, one third is 33.33%. And let's look at the other example you had in the previous lesson. The tax was 0 0.2. And you might want to say the tax rate is, and then within curly brackets, you're going to put the tax. However, it's unlikely you want to show it this way. Normally, when it's a tax rate, you want to say 20%. So once again, you can put the colon and put the percentage sign. And it says the tax rate is 20%, yes, but with lots of zeros. We don't want that. So you can make it clear that you want zero digits after decimal point. So the format specifier after the colon is dot zero percentage sign. And the tax rate is 20%. And we only need a short summary for a short lesson. So you can use the percentage symbol as a format specifier, and this indicates that the value should be treated as a percentage. And you can also add a dot and an integer, as you did with the F when you had floats. In this case, the format specifier in this case, for example, is dot two percent. So treat the value as a percentage, but only use two digits after the decimal point.